Photographers and videographers looking for a notebook that delivers the highest screen resolution and level of performance out there should be turning their eyes to Apple's newest innovation, the MacBook Pro with Retina Display. Hi everyone, I'm Mia. Now, this laptop is not just a regular MacBook Pro with a super sharp screen. It's been completely redesigned to be lighter, thinner, and faster than the previous generation. And after spending some time working on it, I can tell you that it lives up to the hype. This is the first time Apple has integrated its incredibly sharp 2880 by 1800 pixel retina display into a notebook. The significance here is the density of the pixels. You're familiar with this type of picture quality if you own an iPhone 4 or 4S or a third generation iPad. But pairing it with the processing power of Intel's Ivy Bridge quad core processor and powerful NVIDIA Kepler GPU make this Mac a portable powerhouse. The Retina display packs over 5 million pixels into the 15.4 inch screen. By comparison, that's 3 million more than your HD TV. Watching an HD video on this screen is jaw dropping. When I compared it to the previous generation MacBook, I physically saw a difference in the video. No other computer display out there right now even comes close. The contrast is better, blacks are more black, skin tone is truer, and details really stand out on the Retina display. More pixels per inch combined with a new graphics card and better display glass creates a more dynamic viewing experience. Now what I loved, and I'm sure other photographers will agree, is that zoomed in pixel for pixel on the retina display and on a traditional 1280 by 1024 screen, you can see four times more of your image area on the new MacBook Pro, making the tiniest tweaks and adjustments much easier. We found that the viewing angle of 178 degrees makes it easy for multiple people to watch the display at the same time, even at a sharp angle. The entire OS X Lion operating system as well as Mountain Lion support the Retina display, so anything you view in iPhoto, iMovie, and Preview will have that same stunningly clear quality. The same goes for Final Cut Pro X, where you can stream up to nine camera views simultaneously. Now this brings a whole new level of efficiency to video editing. Aperture, Apple's photo editing app, also supports the Retina display, and Adobe says that an update to Photoshop CS6 is in the works. The downside is, Outside of the apps I just mentioned, not many others support this pixel-dense display yet. Safari and Chrome are the only retina-friendly web browsers right now, and reading text in Safari is as easy as reading a printed page, no more squinting needed. But most of the images you'll find online are not high res, so you can't truly enjoy retina in its full glory by just surfing the internet. It probably won't be long before most big name apps catch up, but it may be a while before all of the online world gets on pace with Apple. The new MacBook Pro comes with anywhere from 256 to 768 gigabytes of flash storage and 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now once you decide how much memory you need, you have to stick with it, because one of the ways Apple made this laptop thinner is by soldering the RAM to the logic board, so you can't upgrade it later. I breezed through day-to-day -day activities on this notebook. It's fast and delivers the kind of multitasking efficiency you expect from Apple. But this notebook really stands out in the professional world, in the studio and out in the field. On top of that exceptional display, the new MacBook Pro is 25% thinner and lighter than the previous model. Plus, it's four times faster and its battery will last up to seven hours. Weighing just under four and a half pounds, the notebook is extremely easy to tote from shoot to shoot. When working outside, I paired it with a Hoodman monitor hood to block out sunlight so I could view the full accuracy of the display. That way I didn't have to wait until I was back indoors to find out that maybe my focus was a little off or my images were slightly overexposed. Another reason professional photographers and videographers might consider this top-of-the-line MacBook is its versatility. The added ability to connect bandwidth-hungry peripherals allow it to act as the centerpiece of your post-production studio. You'll find two Thunderbolt ports on the side, and it's the first Apple notebook to finally offer an HDMI port. This means you can set up a post-production suite with two external 1080p independent monitors, like these Apple Thunderbolt displays. For video editors, this makes it easy to view and compare different videos or images simultaneously. And you can even add on a third preview monitor. To set up an all Apple suite like the one we have, you'll have to put in a lot of work, linking devices, downloading software and drivers, and you'll have to reconfigure a few things too. Or you could just use any other monitor with a direct HDMI port to make it easier on yourself. 
The MacBook's dual Thunderbolt ports are important in post-production because you can attach a chain of up to six external devices to each of them. Thunderbolt-compatible external hard drives like these G-Raid Thunderbolt drives are a great link in the chain because they also have dual Thunderbolt ports. If you're working in a demanding post-production environment with tons of HD video, the G-Raid drives 8 terabytes of storage space is a definite plus. Of course, the device at the end of your daisy chain only needs to have one Thunderbolt port, like this Blackmagic Design Intensity Extreme. This device provides a simple way to capture and playback standard and high-def video from an analog component or S-video source, as well as HDMI. So when I attach it to an HDMI-enabled camera, it can either capture recorded footage upon playback or input uncompressed video directly from the image sensor while I'm shooting. This lets me capture video or stills to the MacBook Pro in an uncompressed or compressed state and import it right into compatible software for editing immediately after capture. Of course, you don't have to set up something this elaborate. The MacBook's Thunderbolt ports can be used for something as simple as an Ethernet connection. Apple dropped the Ethernet port from this MacBook Pro. However, a Thunderbolt, 2 gigabit Ethernet adapter, and an Ethernet cable quickly resolves that problem should you need to connect to a network. Another connector you might want to look into is a Thunderbolt to FireWire adapter, just in case you've got legacy FireWire drives or peripherals that you'd still like to use with this new MacBook Pro, which has no FireWire ports. In addition to the two Thunderbolt ports and the HDMI port, this notebook also has a few standard features like a SDXC card reader and two USB 3.0 super speed ports. Phew! All told, this lightweight notebook is by far the most powerful, portable computer Apple has on the market. Instead of using standard parts found in their other laptops, they've re-engineered new ones to make this MacBook Pro with Retina display unique in their notebook line. I'm Mia McCormick. Thanks for stopping by. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.